The next thing I want to look at in our GraphQL server with hot chocolate is more advanced types. So specifically, I want to look at interfaces, unions, and extending types. So starting off, we're going to tackle interfaces. And interfaces are useful when you have a resolver that can return various different types. And those types have some fields that are shared and some fields that are vastly different. And from the client's perspective, they can either query for the shared fields or the specific fields depending on the type. So to demo this, we are gonna implement a new query and this query is just gonna be a basic search query. So we're gonna have a new query on our root query type. It's gonna be async, so it's gonna return a task. We're not sure about the type yet. We're gonna implement that in just a second because that's gonna be our interface type. And we'll just call this search. And this search query is gonna take in the term that we wanna search for. And inside of this resolver, we're going to search for either courses or instructors that match our search term and return them from the query. But here we go. This is where we're going to need an interface type because our search query could return either a course type or an instructor type. So we're going to have to define an interface that's going to support our course type and our instructor type. So let's add this interface and we'll call this the I search result type. And on this interface, we're going to add the shared fields for our instructor type and course type. So in this case, it's just the ID property. So let's go ahead and add that on our interface. So a good for ID. And last thing we got to do on this interface type is actually register it as an interface type. So to do that, we can add this hot chocolate attribute. Let's go ahead and import that. Make sure you use hot chocolate dot types, not system dot runtime dot interrupt services. And we can also give this interface type a name. We'll just call it the search result because I think by default it might do I search result type and that's kind of error specific. So I feel like search result is a solid name here. And now we can head into our instructor type and course type and make sure that they implement this interface. So the I search result type for the instructor type and as well as the course type. So it should be good with those, except we actually have to register the course type and instructor type in our GraphQL server. So if we head into our startup.cs where we add our GraphQL server, we also have to add a type. So let's add our course type as well as our instructor type. All right, so that's all good. Our interface type is set up. Now let's go ahead and use it. So back to our query, our search query is going to return an I search result type. That's our interface type. And now I'm just going to search through our courses and instructors for this search term. And to do this, I'm just going to use my DB context directly. I'm not going to go through a repository or any other mechanisms just for simplicity. So let's make sure that we use our DB context and then actually get that injected through our resolver. So we have this scope service for our school DB context. And then we'll hit our database through entity framework for our courses and instructors that match the search term. So let's get our courses first. So these are our courses and we're going to take our DB context, get into our courses and we're going to select them into course types. So let's do that mapping here. So a new course type and for mapping, I think I already have that up here. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy that for now and paste that down here. And then we'll execute this query with a to list async. So import that from Microsoft.NED Framework Core. And most importantly, let's add our where clauses so that we actually execute the search logic. So we're going to search for courses where the name contains our search term. And that should be good for querying courses. Now let's query for instructors that match our search term. So this will give us back an I enumerable of instructor types and we'll dig into our DB context again for instructors this time. And we want instructors where the first name contains our search term or the last name contains our search term. And we're gonna map these instructor DTOs into instructor types. So let's do that. So got our instructor type, let's map all these fields. So ID, first name, last name and salary all from the instructor DTO. And then just a good old to list async to execute the query. So now we got all of our data. Now we just need to throw this into one single list. And that being said, this should actually be an I enumerable so that we get back a collection of courses and instructors that match our search term. And I think the easiest way to combine both of these I enumerables is by just creating a new list down here of I search result types. And we can concat the courses and concat the instructors. And that should be good. So let's put a breakpoint here and test this out. All right, so a new document that's gonna be a query and reload the schema. So we're gonna do a search 
And our search term, uh, I don't even know. I think we have an instructor named Singleton Sean, so we'll search for Singleton. And then we'll snag the ID, that's the common field between our courses and instructors. But I'm assuming that an instructor is gonna come back. And if I wanna query for additional fields on that instructor type, we're gonna have to use fragments. So to do that, we just have these dots and we're gonna query on our instructor type. And let's say I want the first name, last name and salary. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Singleton will also return course types. Well, in that case, we can just have another fragment here, this time on course type. And maybe I want the name of the course. So let's execute this query and see what we get back. So courses, let's see. We got no courses, so I was right. No courses match that query. How about instructors? I hope I was right there. And oh, it looks like none do. Darn it. And I bet that's because I need to do an uppercase S. Let's try that. And there we go. Now we got two instructors back, both of our Singleton Sean instructors. So now I'm going to search for a course. I don't even know. I think geometry might be one. So let's try that. And there we go. We actually have a bunch named geometry. But since this is a course, we get this name field back. And that's really the only reason I can tell that this is a course. But if you want to know what type you got back, you can also query for type name and that'll tell you what type it is. So here we go. We know it's a course type. And yeah, that pretty much sums up the power of interfaces. We can resolve both of these types, even though they are quite different. And that brings us into our next advanced type, and that is unions. So unions are very similar to interfaces. The only difference is that they have no shared fields. So in this case, let's assume that ID is not shared between our course type or instructor type. And maybe this is a valid thing to remove anyways, because maybe we want to include some other object into our search result that doesn't have an ID property. Well, in that case, we would want to remove it. And now since our search results have no shared properties, this should be classified as a union type. So again, union types, no common fields. And if we were doing this from scratch, we would still have to add our course type and instructor type as types in our GraphQL server setup. But now let's try this out. Should be very similar behavior. So reload our schema. We no longer have an ID field, so we can remove that. And let's query. And this still works just as expected. And if we still want the ID, we can query for it on these fragments. And there we go. So again, unions very similar to interfaces, just necessary if your types have no shared properties, or if you just don't want to enforce them to have shared properties down the road. So that sums up interfaces and unions. Now for my favorite advanced type, and that's just the concept of extending types. So for example, let's look at our query type. And as you can see, we have various different things on here. So we have things related to courses, things related to searching, and things related to, well, <laughs> demoing, I guess. And down the road, we're gonna have queries for instructors as well. So this query type could end up being pretty cluttered. So what we can do to clean this up is we could have our course queries split up into their own class. And then down the road, we could also have our instructor queries split up into their own class. And then maybe these common queries could stay inside of this query class. So ultimately what we're gonna do is extend this query type with other queries just for, in our case, the sake of organization. So extending this query type, we're gonna add a new class in our queries. We'll call this the course query. And right off the bat, this is going to extend our query type. So we gotta use this extend object type attribute, import that from hot chocolate, and the type we're extending is our query type. So specify the type of query here, and that takes us back to our query type. So that was our course query. So of course, we're going to add all of our course queries into there. So let's just cut those out and paste them inside the course query. And let's import all of this stuff. And then I also need my courses repository in here as well. So let's cut out this constructor and field from our query type and paste that in here update the constructor name and import what we need and as you can see now our main query type is a lot thinner and everything related to courses is segregated and organized into its own course query class and finally the last thing we have to actually do is register this course query extension in our startup.cs so we have to add a type extension here and this is for our course query and we should be good to go so if we run this everything should work exactly the same now so let me actually execute this courses query i'll reload the schema looks good let's do it and we still get our courses back so that's working as expected and we've extended our query type so hopefully you can find some use cases where these advanced types are useful so just to summarize we demonstrated union types and interface types and again these are useful when you have a resolver 
that could return various types that have different fields. And you want to use a union type when those return types have no similar fields. And you want to use an interface type when there are similar fields and you want future types to also have those fields. And then we also looked at extending types, which in my opinion is most useful when you wanna organize resolvers that aren't very similar, which is usually on your root query type. Uh, aside from that, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.